Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, focus, focus. <clears throat> Men, the mission today, if you choose to accept it, is. No, wait, no, no, no. That, that's 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 too spyish. Uh, okay. Men, ten hut. Today we do a review on a video game. Now this video game is not that well known, and one of those video games that came from Japan. Now I don't want to hear any excuses from you, loud mouth mouths, and I oh, screw. It, I don't even have a military outfit. Today's review: Valkyria Chronicles. tend to be non-biased. Like, even before I start making reviews, I generally don't have any favorites in anything. Like, if you ask me what's my favorite TV show, movie, or character, I will say I have absolutely no idea. Yeah, sure, I, I might like a few things over others, but generally I tend to treat them all equally. But. If you ask me what's my favorite video game of all time, I will have to say Valkyria Chronicles for the PS3. Now for the PC. I remember when I first discovered this series. I was with my family doing the weekly food shopping and I um, wandered into the video game section of the store. There, I saw the PSP sequel to the game sitting on the shelf looking at me. I saw the box art, so it looked so cool and anime that I begged my family to buy it for me. At last, they said no, so when I went back home, I had to look it, look it up online. There, I watched a whole walkthrough on the first game, and I fell in love with the series since. I played the first one, finally get my hands on the second one, I would have played the third one if it had been localized, and unfortunately, it has never left Japan. But if I were to play it, I would love it. If I were to describe the series, it would be a mix of story-wise, fantasy and World War II, gameplay-wise, third-person shooting, and tactical RPG. Now, if you're wondering how any of the, those things can mix together, Watch this video and I'll explain why. I am the beast, take one letter away and it becomes the best. And today, a review on Valkyria Chronicles, my favorite game of all time. Set in a fictionalization of Europe, two of the continent's superpowers declare war on each other when they realize that they are running low on resources. There's the Atlantic Federation towards the west and the Imperial Alliance towards the east. Both of them use this, this energy source called Regnite, which is a super fantastical fossil fuel, which you can use to fuel cars, lampposts, fire stoves, can even be used for medicine for some reason. And since they're using this for everything, is there any wonder why they have a shortage? Anyway, the both superpowers are at a stalemate, but there's this neutral country called Gallia that has a abundance of Ragnite. So, in order to turn the tide of the war, the Imperial Alliance invades Gallia and claims that country as its own. Our story begins on a small border town called Bull that is being evacuated when there's word on an incoming Imperial attack. Our main male protagonist, Wilkin Gunther, was assisting the evacuation until he was hit by the idiot stick and decided to sketch river fishes in his notebook by the riverside. Seeing that no sane person would do something like that during an evacuation, he was soon arrested by the town watch under the suspicion of being an appeal spy. 
Those charges were soon dropped, however, when they learned that Wilkin is a son of a famous Gallian war hero that helped to found Gaia the last time it had been evaded. Being very sorry, the captain of the town watch, Alicia Melchior, let Wilkin go and actually help him get his younger sister, who is back in town, packing the last of their stuff. Um, they uh, was about to uh, finish out the last few boxes when... You know, Wilkin, you would have a lot more time on your hands if you haven't decided to sketch wild animals while you were supposed to be evacuating. The town wild tried to defend Bull as best as they can, but this is the difference between a police force taking on a fully equipped military, so there's no way they can win this. But before things could look too bleak, Isara Wilkins' younger and adopted sister shows her brother the old family tank that their father had le left behind, who she has been tweaking on ever since their father has passed away. Hoping to give them a sharp edge in the fight, Wilkins uses a tank to assist Alicia and the town watch in help completing the town's evacuation. Once that was done, they soon evacuate themselves since even they realize there's no way they can save the town. After an emotional moment between Walker and Alicia, hoping that one day they can see their town liberated, and says that even in war, they hope that new life can still spring up, they all three of them travel down to the Gallian capital, where they are soon conscripted into the government militia. There, Welkin was put in charge of his own squad. After joining the army, the hero becomes the squadron commander, apparently by virtue of the fact that he was the only new recruit with the presence of mind to bring his own tank. And they fight for that country against the imperial invaders that are invading it. And that, where our stories unfold. We then follow the military campaigns of Squad 7 the unit that Wilkin was put in charge of. And trust me when I say is that each member of the squad has a fully fleshed out backstory and defining personality traits. However, they are only really shown during gameplay and in-game supplementary material. So I'm only going to focus on the characters that actually appear in cutscenes. Wilkin is a cool and collected leader. He always keeps a level head and always comes out with strategies that makes use of their environment. But that isn't because he inherited some sort of super leadership genes from his father. Instead of following his father's footsteps and going to the military, what everybody expected he would do, he instead wanted to become a teacher and want to help gather his own sort of way. He wanted to teach younger kids about nature and the environment and science and all that, and he uses that knowledge to his advantage. Notice some plants taken out of the river? Well, that part of it must be shallow enough to drive his tank right through it. Notice a, uh, a small animal trail in the forest? He discovers a secret trail to that leads straight to the Imperial supply base and caught them off guard. Yeah, he does act like he gets very distracted very easily, but he always makes a point to explain his way of thought. Unlike a sort of anime that shows him as a complete dunce. Hate that anime. Alicia is Wilkins' second in command, and she's a headstrong young woman. We only met her in Bull as the captain of the town watch, and the person who sort of arrested Wilkin, but she sure explains that she was only volunteering and her main goal in life is to become a baker, a simple and humble job. She's kind and friendly enough so you want to be her friend, 
but she's also passionate and deeply loyal to her country that makes you want to make sure that you know on the other end of a gun. And unlike the anime, she isn't a freaking racist! And speaking about racism, that leads us to Welkin's younger sister, Isara. No, she isn't racist herself, she's a victim of racism. You see, she belongs to this race called the Darksons, and they are like these second class citizens from within the game. Supposedly, they caused this massive calamity eons ago that caused massive scars across the continent. However, even though this happened a really long time ago, and there's actually no proof that say that they did it, everyone still likes to blame them and treat them like dirt. It is so messed up, in fact, that the Empire even set up concentration camp for dachshunds and even hunt them like sports. Damn that messed up, even by some of today's standards. But fortunately, it's hard they had to go through all that. Even though she isn't related to Wilkin by blood, she, they still treat each other like brother and sister, and she was always treated like a member of the family. The skills that she brings to the table is her mechanical expertise and part of the tank that Wilkins takes commands in. Next is Rosie, the badass shock trooper of Squad 7. She used to just be a singer at a bar before the war, and she's also a little bit racist towards dachshunds. Not to the extreme levels that I mentioned earlier, but she does love to show animosity towards the girl who drives the tank. Now normally any racist character will be put on the lowest end of the likability scale, but throughout the game, she slowly gets character development, um, learns that her hatred is actually uh, pointless and unnecessary, and become close to her dachshund teammates. And, and then there's Largo, the big guy of the squad. He's the one who blows up the enemy tanks and makes sure that the squad eats the vegetables. Yes, vegetables is his one defining character traits. He used to fly in the militia before, so he's kind of like the old man veteran of the group who puts experience above everything else. So he was skeptical to Wilkins' command at first. But once Wilkins shows how smart he is, Lago soon become a loyal soldier under his command. Other characters include Captain Eleanor, Wilkins' commanding officer, the Imperial commanders that are leading the invasion against Gallia, the nosy reporter, the Princess of Gallia, and Folio, Wilkins' best friend from college who is also put in charge of a militia unit. Yeah, while Wilkins studied nature and bugs and all that, Baldio actually studied ancient history and lost civilizations. Yeah, Foley and Wilkin are really best friends to each other, and since they are massive geeks in their respective fields, they have some very interesting banter. And since they are good friends, I'm sure Foley wouldn't try to hit on Wilkin's girl! Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's just, uh, this anime really... ...esses me off!